Pública. Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers with me, Claudia Monlouis, Communications Officer within the Department of Home Affairs and National Security, and my guest, Ms. Fernanda Henry, Director of Forensic Science Services at the Forensic Science Lab. Welcome to our discussion. Thank and you. I think a good point of departure would be for you to share a little bit about who is the new face <laughs> at the Forensic Lab. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for this opportunity to, um, <clears throat> to showcase the laboratory. Um, Fernanda Henry, um, <laughs> I like to start by saying that I'm a black woman <laughs> and um, who is extremely passionate about forensics and, um, and feels um, very, very humbled and, and um, grateful to be the new director of Forensic Science Services. Um, I, my background um, in forensics started with my educational training um, in uh, forensic biology at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, in minus 30 degree weather some days. And I thought, <laughs> what am I doing here? But <laughs> you know, we're here for a purpose. So we made it through. Um, and um, uh, shortly after that, I returned home um, and the lab was functioning at the time, but I didn't, I didn't get a position there. And I became a graduate teacher at my alma mater, St. Joseph's Convent. So I taught um, sciences and singing and music um, for three years at the convent. And those were amazing years. I got, um, to, I got to teach some phenomenal women, you know, who are making such um, significant contributions to society today. Um, and um, uh, shortly after that, um, there was a position available at the laboratory and I was blessed to be transferred um, to the lab in 2007. So I, I became a forensic scientist too in 2007. So I got to fulfill that, that dream then. Um, I pursued my master's degree in 2011. Um, and I had started, I'd been trained as a DNA analyst and it was my intention to um, promote to the DNA technical leader. So a technical leader, the, the requirements for a technical leader would be three years of experience as a, as a, a DNA analyst, in addition to a master's degree. So my, my technical leader at the time, um, she encouraged me to get my, my master's, and so I did. I pursued my master's degree in forensic DNA with Oklahoma State University. And, um, and here I am as the director today. And here you are also making your wonderful contribution. And it's, it is always a very, very valuable thing, I must add. And I'm sure viewers would agree to have a St. Lucian yes. who understands the psyche of the St. Lucian people yes. holding such uh, very critical posts okay. of leadership across the community, across the public service, etc. Yes. And so we've heard a lot about the forensic oh, lab and yes, not we have necessarily not always good. Yes, yes, good and not always correct Indeed. information. Yes, and so I'm very happy to have this voice from within yes. with us here today to educate us in some regards and in others of course to set the record straight yes yes um but before we delve into these issues mm -hmm. um perhaps we could begin with the journey of forensics in st lucia sure yes um i and again you know when we talk about information and what is correct or, or what is is unknown um in certain respects i think the history of forensics is largely unknown in st lucia um forensics started at around 1980 i think i was still 
probably in my mother's womb at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but, um, and it started with um, Mr. Kawi, Carlton Kawi, who's Canadian. And he was the chemist on board. And Mr. Louis Murray, who was the uh, trace analyst. He's a trace analyst and police scientist. So the two of them started the laboratory at the Ezra Long Lab and in the 80s. And then we had other, we had other St. Lucians joining. And that is, you know, that is such a great thing for the history of our lab, that we have always had this involvement of St. Lucians um, in operation. So we had um, Miss Alexandra, um, well, she was in Twistle at the time. She's Mrs. Dubilee now. Um, then we had Miss Annis Charles who joined. Um, there was a gentleman, Mr. Shalry, who was also employed there. And they continued until, I believe, 2004. Um, then the, the, there was a short, uh, a brief break and the lab reopened in 2007 where, when I joined. So we were still only doing chemistry and trace at that time. Um, and, um, and crime scene work as well. Mr. Murray did a lot of crime scene work with the police. Um, so when I joined, that was what I was trained to do. I wasn't the chemist, but I did trace and serology and, um, and crime scene work together with Mr. Murray. Um, and then we moved to um, Tapion. The, they built the, you know, the fancy building that we have now. And we moved there in 2009. We had the official opening on December 21st. And, um, and we commenced operations there doing chemistry on a much larger scale, um, trace um, and serology, and then we introduced DNA, which had not been part of the initial plan. So um, that, is, that is our history. Well, we would certainly um, love to thank the trailblazers in yes, that area. Indeed. And I'm sure that they are pleased to yes. see the unfolding of a modern day version yes. of, of the area. The initial concept. And, yes, and yes. the initial concept, having yes. seen it um, grow from strength to strength yes. over the years. Yes. So you did indicate that the lab is open. Yes, it is. It is. And the um, lab is operational. It is operational. Albeit, and I'm sure you know this is, is public knowledge. We we are, are we have approached it, you know, in a phased manner. So we, you know, when I said that we were capable of chemistry, trace, and DNA, because of, of the the changes in our staff complement since I became the director, we have. Um, decided to have a phased approach um, to the opening. So we're only um, commenced operations with chemistry at the moment, but we intend to gradually phase everything back in f to make the lab fully operational again. I, I also want um, to, to um, include the contributions of the Office of the Pathologist. So I want to mention Dr. King as well, one of the trailblazers for forensics in St. Lucia too. Okay, and, yes. and, and still, um, very active. Still very active, in yes. That, in that area. Yes. Uh, so the lab is opened, mm -hmm. it is operational, it is. and the perception of the public is that the lab is linked with criminal justice. So yes. when you say a phased approach, mm -hmm. um, is that something that is, is normal? It mm -hmm. is, it is uh, um, perhaps more productive to go in this direction rather than mm -hmm. to um, try to make some major leaps mm -hmm. which may not um, may not be the best approach mm -hmm. it if it's I think for us in mm -hmm. our context and I think that is what's key that it is we have to look at it in our context um, our context is that um, it had been closed for some time um, and our staff complement is very small. So for us to, to have decided to put all of the services online at the same time um, with the staff complement that we have now, I think would have been counterproductive. Um, so in our context, having a phased approach um, is the best approach, I think. So we can, because we're, what we're doing is we're making it more sustainable that we can support services with our current staff complement. Um, whatever services that we, we do not provide on site, 
we outsource on behalf of the police. So we are the, the lead authority on forensic work that is happening here or abroad on behalf of, of the justice system, um, if we will. And we also, we also have the opportunity to work on our quality procedures, our quality system, to ensure that it is robust, it is, it is well built, so that as we add more services, that they, they just, it's, it's easy for them to just fit in seamlessly to an already established quality system. At this point, viewers, we will take a break, but we will be right back with you in a bit. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. And welcome back, viewers. And we are moving right along with uh, the Director of Forensic Science Services, Ms. Fernanda Henry. And my question to you now has to do with the, the synergies and the constituents of the lab. I know there are many players, but then how do they all uh, fall in line and, and smoothly okay. uh, coordinate? Um, sure. Our, our, our stakeholders, as we call them, our clients, because we believe that we, we, we render a service. Um, those would be the Royal Sanitary Police Force primarily um, because they are the ones who investigate um, all crime related activity. Um, then we deal with the DPP's office. Um, then we also have the, well, the crime scene units because they are the ones at the crime scenes collecting the evidence. And then we have the office of the pathologist. So we attend um, postmortems and assist um, at postmortems, provide um, consultation and guidance, etc. Um, so those are really our constituents, our clients and stakeholders at the lab. And if, if, if possible, um, on an ordinary working day, yes. um, can you maybe give us a, a, a small scenario? I know mm -hmm. our, t our time is limited, yes. um, where your, your role would, would come in. Sure. Um, Let's take a, a sharp force um, homicide activity, uh, stabbing <laughs> with a knife. Um, once the incident occurs, and um, let's say the, the victim um, passed on the scene, so the victim would not then be transferred to the hospital, and we would have had a pronouncement of death at the scene. So the crime scene unit is activated along with, with a pathologist who can um, declare um, that the individual has passed. And crime scene will now will call for forensic technical assistance. So I would go out to the scene with them and um, we would begin searching, you know, so crime scene would do the searching and cordon off, of course, this scene security first. And um, then we would search for possibly a, a, a weapon um, and we would try to reconstruct the scene, document it with photography, etc., and um, and then we would try to 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 with the reconstruction try to imagine how the scenario would have played out to help us in retrieving the evidence that we that would be useful in the prosecution of the case. And when we say prosecution, we don't necessarily mean that we're only looking um, to, to find a guilty party. But if there is a scenario where we are dealing with the wrong um, assailant, the wrong suspect, we want to be able to, to exonerate that person as well. And forensics has to do that. Forensics has to be um, objective and unbiased and, and impartial. So. Our evidence collection is not, not geared towards, you know, 
finding anybody culpable, but for it to, t to speak, for it to, to give a story. So after that, then the evidence is taken to the um, evidence unit at the police, and then we, have a, we, we consult and we talk about what it is that we have and, and how we're going to pursue, what sort of action we're going to take. And we, we bring in the DPP's office, so we get you know the legal counsel um, to say, well, how should we proceed? Um, once we've decided that, then we, we request um, evidence, then we analyze and, and carry out the tests that we need to. We produce a report, it goes to the investigator, it goes to the DPP's office, when it gets to court and they call us for um, to provide expert witness testimony if there's any um, explanation that needs to be done we would have to do that and then our second crime scene is what I, I, I neglected before we get to before we get to court our second mm -hmm. crime scene is is at the mortuary our post-mortem is crime scene number two so that all of us would be there so the crime scene unit would be there I would be there to consult um, and the pathologists are the ones carrying out the autopsy and we would do another round of evidence collection there to help um, put all the pieces together which would eventually go to court and the DPP's office you know stays that ship Thank you for that very vivid and comprehensive <laughs> um, description. Yes. Um, and, it, and it is in a nutshell, no doubt. Yes. And I believe that um, there is so much. We are just scraping the surface, yes. viewers, because of the time we are allocated yes. for this discussion. But there are young persons out there who yes. want to get into that field. Yes. Is there room for them? Of course, of course. And um, when I say so, I say it in a holistic way. Um, I don't want anyone to be restricted to the context of St. Lucia. Forensics, because science is, is amazing, I think, um, and forensic science is, as I said, for me, it is it's really about service. Um, so anyone with that attitude um, and wanting to help um, people, forensics is, is, you know, and not to mention that you love science, you know, forensics is it. But um, for young people um, who are pursuing, who want to pursue forensics, there is the, the, the natural science aspect or the pure science aspect, but there are also um, um, humanity um, related humanities uh, subjects, um, the arts, so to speak, that you know that can be considered with forensics. So we have forensic psychology, we have um, um, counselors and so on, um, so they can go into, into social work and, and help with forensics because we have victims who need, you know, they need the support. Um, then there is victim advocate groups. Um, that is that can be you know part of, of, of the whole forensics um, scheme um, and then we have the hardcore analysts who have to do the chemistry and the physics and the biology and the forensic you know um, science um, and um, so it's really you know it, it can really be you know you don't have to stick to science but you can be an arts person and still be involved in forensics Wow, with just two minutes left, I'm <laughs> almost hard pressed oh to pose um, one of many questions yeah. just um, percolating in my head right now. Okay. Um, but we have a perception um, now mm -hmm. um, which comes about because there is uh, something called the CSI effect. So can we yes. speak to this very quickly before okay. we conclude? If I can as be as succinct as I can. The CSI effect is as a result of, of all the shows that we, all of the crime related shows that we see on TV. They sensationalize crime and they sensationalize the, the um, analysis of crime. Um, it's very quick. Everything happens within an hour or 30 minutes sometimes. And it creates a false perception, a false expectation um, of what should really be obtained in reality. Um, every case is different. The complexities of a case may differ from another. So we may be able to, sort, to, to, to go through, to analyze a case in three days, whereas another one will take us three months or three years. Um, so the CSI effect, just it just kind of... Um, it, it plays um, to our psyche uh, for the expectation that isn't realistic. And I can well imagine that it also um, creates a false perception in the minds of some persons that uh, they can get away with yes, certain things. that is true. And that may yes. not be the case. Indeed. Okay. Yes. So I think um, our best advice um, to everyone yes. is to abide by the abide law. Abide by the law. Yes. And that brings us to 
the conclusion already viewers of a very interesting discussion um, we promise you that we will be back to touch on many other salient points in the near future but for now i need to thank my guest once again Director of Forensic Science Services at the St. Lucia Forensic Lab, Ms. Fernanda Henry. Um, it was nice having you. See you again sometime soon.